Hi everybody, welcome to episode 85 of the Run the Hills podcast, sponsored by Chia Charge. Chia Charge have been funding, oh, funding? Pudging and funding for many times by Gary Thwaite. <laughs> Fuel, fueling adventures with real food made with real ingredients since 2012. Go and check them out at www.chiacharge.co.uk. Again, Eddie, I can't, I can never seem to do it. <laughs> Every time when it's new to start, I just like, this is great, I can drink half a cup of tea by the time you've got to. <laughs> oh, how are you doing? Oh, good. We just said, oh, it's nice and it's just you and me. It's just you and me, it feels like. We can just be ourselves, you know, we can do all the things you do when you're just around family. <laughs> just relax. Eddie can be truly disgusting, say all the things you didn't say. Yeah. <laughs> We just said it's like when you meet a mate, a really good mate for a run, and there's no, uh, you can run quiet, you don't need to chat, sometimes you chat, yeah. you can be really like, I'm really tired, oh, I can't be bothered, let's walk. <laughs> yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, because sometimes when you get in a group, it's it's a lot of flexing, isn't it, and you end up running quite a bit quicker than I don't run time. now, I'm old enough, Gary, I don't run with anyone that flexes anything, because people, people love it, and if they come to Morsi and they're like, Eddie, do you want to meet for a run, especially, especially middle-aged men? <laughs> and I'm like, well, you can, but I'm running my run. And if you, uh, yeah, if you want to run faster than me or slower than me, I'll always run slower. Uh, so it's much, last week I was a bit of a humble pie, wasn't I? I was taking a hot, took a whole week. Strava recorded zero kilometers run. Uh, I took a whole week off running. Didn't bother me in the slightest, Gary. I woke That's up good. in the morning, stretched, and went, yeah, no running for me. I could just hear. Oh, no, it's not my dogs. Um, uh, so I enjoyed that. I took a couple of days intensive rest. I've learned my body responds really well to rest because it doesn't get much. Um, and then I tried a little bit of light biking with no heavy swifting. Yeah. And that was it. I had a lot. I'm, I'm like the polar opposite of you. I had so much physio. It was like a full-time job. <laughs> Chiropractor, physio, physical therapist on repeat. I week. was really impressed by that. But I'm so lucky I realised this because I'm in France, so the medical system is so much easier to get treatment for. And I'm in a small town where, where everybody knows your name. <laughs> so everybody, you know, I can message, WhatsApp my um, sports therapist and go, and she will be like, I can fit you in, I'll fit you in tomorrow. You know, it's yeah. like, I don't have to wait. She knows my body. She knows what I'm doing. I don't have to go and go. So then I, the, the, when I do that, it, you know, it's like I just walk in and I get world's class treatment because they all work with athletes uh, all the time uh -huh. um, because people come here to train and break themselves in the mountain all the time so I realize I'm so lucky that I get that hands-on so within four or five days I mean it's quite um it, I had a lot of painful treatment but it's so much better yeah. so it was so bad my right foot was so bad when you do that um foot to you know your knee to the wall test where you keep your foot and you squat and you should have between uh 10 and 12 centimeters gap okay. so one side i did and on the other side zero. Oh, you said uh, this yeah you mentioned yeah, this, I said I this last week, but now it's about eight i've really worked hard on oh. that section. everybody's worked hard on moving eddie's leg so much better um pain's gone just a little bit of pain when i'm in in the first bit of mobilization yeah so uh, I embraced um, a bit of swifting, loved it. I turned on my erg mode. Do you have erg mode on your... Um... I've seen this thing flash on and off, but I've not paid any attention to uh, it. So it just fixes the watts on your bike. It's okay. a bit like running on a treadmill with the set speed. You can't move it. Yeah. It's so much harder than free pedaling um... because it's, it's like a fixed weight, basically, that you're pushing. Okay. I work so much better with it. So I've done three or four really good... Again, I have to slightly rein it back because I'm like, just don't ever do it, Eddie. <laughs> uh, you know, if it says you have to do that, you don't have to do that. You can yeah. rein it back a bit. Um, and uh, so I've done a few of those and no pain, which is great. Done my weights. And then we skied. We've had low, for, the temperatures dropped again, again. And we had um, so much snow over the weekend. So me, my hubby, and my littlest one, we went for three days, continuous, like we skied three or four hours every day in the powder. We 
Bryn and I were broken. Evie was fine. We came home, we had to go have a nap. <laughs> And she was like, oh, I'm going to go play Famous Five outside. Oh, how do they um, do it? <laughs> but I, I, yeah, I embraced that because I'd have been training then. I'd have been like, no, I don't, I can't ski anymore. I've got to be running. So we had yeah. such a lovely time. The snow was amazing. There was nobody there. And we had like drinks on the mount. You know, we lived, we were a bit like tourists, which we yeah. never do normally. So I oh, filled my cup with love that. And then yesterday, so I gave myself a whole week of zero kilometers. And then yesterday, Day, I tried a little um so I have been walking the dogs and I've noticed the improvement in walking the dogs um and then I tried a few like little running steps when I was walking the dogs like okay no pain but then that's a fine normally there isn't any pain is there it's when you go a little bit longer yeah so yesterday I we've got a flat flat you know 200 meters climbing little river path that normally I never go near because I'm like what that's flat why would I run on that <laughs> um and uh so I jogged around that no pain no pain afterwards which is always the um the big deal but I was very yeah. cautious I'm still rather cautious because it has got better really quickly I'm like okay there is that time in uh, moment in time when you're you are really worried about aggravating it again yeah so I've got that slight nervous tension so I'm just going to stay on swift and get my um sweaty heart rate workouts on those and uh in the gym and now i can do all my gym work whereas last week i couldn't really squat yes. and i couldn't really and then you're a bit if you can't squat and you can't lunge there's a lot of you know you could do core and stuff that comes out your eyeballs but yeah. honestly, who wants to do that um so yeah so i'm going to got some more physical therapy after this and then and then uh and then i'm going to try another little jog but the jogging is going to be like literally just jogging this week i think and biking i'm trying not to get that ner that slight nervousness that i've got eight weeks till i need yeah to my goodness me yeah we got, we got the late 100 emails started dropping this weekend <gasps> this week 16 weeks to go and i thought of you that they yeah, it's not that far away is it eight weeks but i as with i don't ever like that the race i'm not letting the race dictate my recovery and my training i yeah. will just carry on and keep it smooth keep that ride smooth and do as my body feels you know i was thinking about it yesterday i was like i've got 22 years i started ironman triathlon when i was 20 yeah now i've already do. <laughs> um there's 22 years of and yeah. i've not apart from i've had three kids so i've had that like break of um training but i i've got so much endurance and experience in yeah. that body so there's there's many boxes ticked and if i don't turn up at that start line fully fit missed a few maybe I mean, I, I'm not going to worry about it because no. really the point of doing this on the spine, anyway, the challenger, not the, the, some, the full spine, is to um, experience the course and recce it. So yep. if I'm not as fit and that slows me down slightly, that might be quite a good thing and it doesn't become racing, Eddie. And I, then you go, so how was the course? And I go, I don't know. I didn't look. I was too busy. Yeah, I didn't look. Racing <laughs> guy in front of me. <laughs> all positive and I'm proud of myself of how I handled that little blip in training and I think as well I look back on the winter so many lessons learned I won't bore you with them but I think whenever we get injured as long as we like I don't oh it drives me mad when people won't rest I'm like all cross train like honestly the addiction to running you've got to think long term I want to be the old granny it's hard though isn't it when you're so in a, meeting you on the top of a weight we just made it up gary <laughs> did you bring the tea oh no i forgot the flask in the car bring the coffee <laughs> <laughs> i really try and i think that's come with age now as well like it doesn't bother me cross training or resting i'm like i'm much i don't want to be in pain in my everyday life yeah 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 it's very important just too old for that now anyway talking about being in pain how are you <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a lot of knee chats. It's quite, it's it, you know, it's it's but it's very generous of people to kind of be thinking of me like that. But uh, yeah, I get a lot of uh, concern over my knee, and I have to say, yeah, it's 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 loads better. It's really inconsistent though. To be like, I did six hours uh, over six hours, I think, on the lakes on Saturday with pretty much no pain whatsoever until the last little bit as we were dropping down to Coniston, and that's quite aggressive, like any descent, I suppose. So I did feel it then, but then. Probably nearly everybody that had been on the fells for six hours would have some little knee. rusty old knees would be. Yeah, yeah. So I can't really complain about that. But um, I have to say, this week when I've started, apart from my cold and chest infection, isn't great. But uh, the knee itself, yeah, I'm I'm at a point where I'm not really 
Should we stop talking about it? Should we stop talking about it? You brought it. Yeah, you you kind of brought it up. (laughs) All right, then. You brought it up. I didn't want it to hurt. (laughs) So, yeah, knee is Lord's better. And I think, you know, I think I've managed it quite well. I've really upped the strength on my legs. I've increased the weight that I'm lifting to. I kept more but mobile, but I wasn't really running. So, and I hit the bike loads, I think. Uh, yeah, I think it's good. And this will be a test of this week because it will be the first proper load as far as... Okay. What's session. the load looking like this week? Well, it was it's supposed to be three workouts. They're not huge in volume. One is a 40-minute fart lick, and it's just increased the effort going up anything. So there's no... I love a bit like, of fart lick. Yeah. I often forget about it. And then um, it's great for, like, come back after races if you're looking for, a, a, like, a workout two or three weeks after a race or if you're feeling a bit stale and you're not sure if you're, you're tired or not because you can yeah. achieve in it, whatever. <laughs> Because there's no like, uh, yeah. there's no like, oh, I didn't at that pace because you don't need to worry about it. Well, that's it. And, and where we live, the, the, the Dean, the hills aren't very big, but they really mimic cross country uh, mm. quite well. And they're mm. so steep for, they only last a minute and a half, two minutes, but yeah, real good bang for your books. You can't fail to get your heart rate elevated on, on those little hills. So we do, that's one effort. One was just a 15 minute tempo run. So easy for say 15 and 15 minutes then 50 minutes uh easy at the end so that that's quite light and then the other one was five by five minutes and it doesn't feel it though if you've not done anything for a while no, no, yeah. so, oh, i can't believe i used to do for like three hours <laughs> but i'm only going to do two of those and then the the zwift will take the load for the other uh session so yeah we'll see we'll see how we go with my ass you did like quite a long zwift yeah two hours uh neat best part of two hours <laughs> What's, what's the program you're following? What's it called? I'll just oh, wait. goodness me. The Grand Forno. Oh, um, is it? Is it that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, five minutes on, ten minutes off. But then progressively those five minutes on got a little bit harder. And then at the end there was uh, only, I think, two minutes of quite oh, quite right. hard. But it went on for like two hours. I stuck um, Joker on on Netflix. So I watched that. Can you watch okay. it? I can't watch anything when I'm on the turbo, especially if I've got the erg mode on, because yeah. I feel like give it when I'm on the like rest bits in between. I just because like, I get on Instagram and then I realize like this is come on Eddie, focus. I'm gonna be working out <laughs> on the ground. Well, I don't think I uh, fully <clears throat> was invested in the film, but it was a really welcome distraction, so it was good. On it's Netflix, not... I have the um, audio description keeps coming on, and ah. it gets. You ever heard that? And it goes. So and so gets into the <laughs> lift, but if yeah, you're yeah. on the um, if you're on the turbo treadmill, it's quite handy because you can't hear sometimes the um, the script, can you? So it's like yeah. ladies describing it because I can't <laughs> see it through the blood and the sweat. Yeah. You're right. There's so much sweat, and I use the um, the the effervescent precision hydration stuff. So that was good because I just thought, oh, I well, I, yeah, I couldn't do it. I had three precision hydration full strength tablets because i was only an hour on my bike but then the dehydration afterwards wow you must I be mean, putting a lot more effort than i do Eddie, because I <laughs> but i think also at altitude you sweat um yeah i sweat i sweat more probably heavy breathing well you know i'm just a sweater Gary. i'm a sweater and a grunter <laughs> but then oh yeah i woke up this morning and and i just didn't feel great after that big session and i did a run with rex and i'm not too sure if it was because all my runs in the morning are I'm not fasted because I'm following any kind of uh, restrictive diet or anything like that. I just do it because if I have breakfast, then that's an extra half an hour before yeah, I get, yeah, out, get out the, the door. door. So I felt, yeah, I felt this morning a bit meh when I was Most running. Stuff, yeah, you'd have been low on your old carbs and a bit dehydrated. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. So, so I think I'll roll over my workout until tomorrow with Neil instead of today. And I might just do, a, like I said, go on the bike later on, see how I feel. But yeah, I can't complain. The knee's fine. Up, up the running mileage so that was good uh and loads of strength work foam rolling and i did annoyingly i forgot to put some of my foam rolls on strava for you eddie i stop it i was worried <laughs> i knew it i was like let me just check through his stats Where is, where's his foam rolling i put my strength on strava but purely for my own i'm like got to do two hours worth of strength training yeah. every week and i so if i strava it i can see i've done it and then i can yeah. see it yeah slack off um it doesn't make any um 
uh, yeah, that's the reason that I put it on there, not for kudos. Obviously, all my runs, I want kudos, many of them, even the ones where I'm jogging around with the dogs. These celebrities that have got like um, runners that have got like thousands of followers and they do like easy 5K and they get like 8,000 kudos. Yeah. And then I, you go off to the lakes for like six hours, 20 people. <laughs> 10, 20 people, yeah. <laughs> I don't mind that. <laughs> we don't. We do it for the kudos, just like the podcast, Gary. Talk about results, people that do do stuff for kudos Ooh. hey you go first oh, yeah. oh results for the peak district 70th birthday bash full bash won by ryan whelan in eight hours 19 and fran collett just behind him that was a close it, wasn't it eight yeah. hours 20 <gasps> i'd be curious to see the splits on that yeah less than a minute i wonder if that was a sprint finish you get him next time fran for me it's the rose of the shires ultra david green took the win in seven hours 17 minutes and 59 seconds that's nice numbers that and he just he just crept in under um and rachel piper uh took the win for the ladies in eight hours 22 minutes and 39 seconds awesome well done I've got a couple more uh, results to read out. Um, South Downs Way 50, which we talked about last week, it happened. Uh, Luke Davis, your wife Sophie, has been in touch. She is so proud of you. She wants to give you a special congratulations. Big kisses probably as well. She didn't say that, but I'm just adding that. <laughs> uh, you won in six hours, 49. Awesome. Uh, I had a look back. I think you've done it before as well. You were much quicker. Uh, super well done. And Beth and Mail won a women's race in seven hours 12 there was a bit of controversy i'm afraid gary nine people went off course and cut three miles off the course um and if anyone who's done a centurion race knows that how well marked these races are you literally a hundred mile race if you can't see a bit of tape on that hundred yeah. mile you're going the wrong way that is how way. diligently they mark their courses um so if you can't see a bit of tape basically you've gone the wrong way and you have to turn around well, These people, happened there? um so i saw them coming into the first checkpoint and i know this race so well i was like geez those girls are um 15 minutes ahead of when i arrived at the first checkpoint when i did it and i was like my god i don't know how uh they got that fast yeah, yeah, anyway fast. because they cut three miles of course um so they were given sadly an hour penalty all oh. these people which is fair enough because um you went the wrong way so a good lesson if you go the wrong way turn around and go back always worth turning around if you can't see the tape you're not sure or if your watch is beeping at you of course of course of course i'm afraid the gpx never lies though i pretend it lies to me when i'm finishing a race to you and when it says 4.3 miles to the finish of like 100 mile i'm like no don't worry it's only two i'm yeah. sure it's two. the gpx <laughs> is lying uh, but it was good it was good to see lots of women at the front end of the race and lots of women being competitive we also had the wana down in Dorset. This was huge. Uh, Will Kemp won it in 14 hours, 41 minutes, and Rachel Price in 21 hours, 46 minutes. Well done for everybody who raced this weekend. Lots of races. I remember you talking about people going off course. I remember the very, I think it was the first year they did the East Coast uh, Trail Half Marathon. There's a little section pretty much near the beginning where you go into a little dean called Hawthorne Dean, and it's a loop, and then you go back onto the East Coast again. And I'm pretty sure with the leaders just didn't go into Hawthorne Dean and they got to the end without really knowing that they'd gone wrong. Yeah, apart yeah. from when their watchers were saying 11 miles instead of 13 miles. Yeah. Oof. Yeah, well, so it's nasty. It's a horrible, like when I went wrong last summer in that race when the weather was really bad. Oh, it's a horrible feeling, that sick feeling of I've gone wrong and now I'm lost and yeah. I've no way to get back on, uh, on track. And it's so, first, it's the most frustrating um remember I did a 50k the wheeled 50k many years ago and it was like um I start I was running back towards the finish I must have been like 2k from the finish um me and the me and this guy and we missed the turn to the finish and we carried out on the loop again oh, I and uh, and I we were like after like like 10 minutes or so we were like yeah we've, um, we've done this before how you like totally lose your bearings oh my god the anger and then we yeah. turned around and then the guy the race director was like we've been where have you been we've been yeah. like waiting. we thought you were like coming in and we've been waiting for you it's easy to make easy to make, especially when you're tired to make mistakes and to convince yourself you're going the right way I started a race once late. I got there late, and um, the, so I was behind the sweep, and they'd taken the tape away. So I just completely was winging it. It was hard was um, Osmotherly Marathon. How late Look, were you? What were you doing? Well, I missed the turn in for Osmotherly, and I kept driving south until I, I was pretty much on the A1 before I thought, oh, 
this is not right. <laughs> Turned around and went back and started late. I must have started maybe half an hour, 45 minutes late. Still... Anyway, we've all done it. The most important thing, if you do get lost in a race, is not to panic. Turn around and go back to where you started. Don't try and continue. And as you're lost and you slow down, you might as well eat something as well. Always have yeah. a snack. Always have uh, a cheer charge snack. Yeah. Always have a cheer charge snack. Right. This week, we catch up with GB Ultra Trail runner Joe Meek. Joe has competed over all distances, all terrains, uh, road, trail. She lives down in Dartmouth now and is also a working physio. We talked to her about her training, some of the FKTs she did uh, during lockdown, training towards the fling. Oh, and of course, her life with uh, Wilfred. Uh, border terrier that speech is highly in the interview oh, anyway, <laughs> <laughs> I was like oh no is it Winston Wilfred Winston I think he'd come to anything if you had a little bit of soft yeah uh, anyway he was very he, mischievous wasn't he he was very naughty you might hear him in the interview he not uh, he starts off all tired and then he realizes his mum's busy chatting and he then gets down and then he starts chewing stuff poor Joe was trying to remain like a wriggly <laughs> two-year-old uh and uh yeah and she kept looking she was trying to chat and he could just hear carnage going on in the background we were like it's very normal during our podcast joe but she was uh yeah she's a great guest here's our chat with joe Today's guest is Joe Meek. Uh, thanks for the, your time today, Joe and uh, Winston. Is that, is that correct? Uh, Wilfred. Wilfred, oh my goodness. <laughs> I'll start again. I'll start again. Sorry. <laughs> Wilfred. <laughs> I will. I'll go again. Thanks for the time today. <laughs> today's guest is Joe Meek and her lovely dog, Wilfred. Thanks for your time today, Joe. How are you? Where are you? And have you been for a run today? Uh, how am I? I am actually surprisingly well. And I say that because I've had COVID and I only got tested clear yesterday. I am in Devon at home. And yes, I have just been for a run with Wilfred today. My dogs are on the other sofa. Would you want to come? No, they're done. You know when it rains and dogs pretend not to be alive all day in case you make them go out in the rain? Yeah. And they're like, I'm not, I don't want to go. He loves it. He loves the rain. We've just been out. I honestly, he's insatiable. How far would you run with him? The most we've done is 12 miles, but it's slow. Yeah. He loves it. Slow in, in respect to the fact that uh, I only have so much control over him. So if he wants to sniff, then he wins. Tell me about it. Do you let him run wild? I let him run wild. Yeah, I've never been a lead person. I didn't I didn't train him on the lead. So I only have it now for road safety, really. Yeah, that's the same yeah. with mine. But that that they have no road safety and on the lead no. terrible. But I'm like, well, I'm in a good I'm it's literally for 20 meters for most of your life, hopefully. And then I let them all just run wild. Yeah, no, I love to see a dog run. Yeah, I just let him go on with it. He's quite tired now, isn't he? He's not very old, is he? Is he a year? Yeah, just uh, 14 months. Oh. So uh, we we'll wait till the year before the running and then uh, twice a week. Oh, I think he's knackered now. <laughs> <laughs> I love a run with my... I've got a little dog called Rex and I can sneak and do some miles, but he's on the lead and he, he just drags me and drags he drags me for an hour every, every day. <laughs> <laughs> but it's awesome. Like you said, the miles become so slow. I, whatever it was, my commute would be just ticking along quite an easy run. But when I go out with a dog, it's probably an extra two or three minutes every mile with all the sniffing. Yeah, it around. is. Yeah, but I measured it the other day, a minute per mile slower. I love yeah. it. I'm, not, I'm like, can you come on my sessions? Because <laughs> I can use your excuse to stop going like this. Not yeah. <laughs> you know, that's actually where nodding dog comes from, isn't it? He is yeah. actually doing the nodding dog. And what would be a typical run, yeah, for you and, and Wilfred? Uh, so we did six miles this morning, but a good deal of elevation. So if I take him on a boring run, he's more likely to bugger off. Whereas <laughs> if I take him on a nice hilly run then I have his undivided attention so yeah. for me he can scoot up a hill but it takes me double the time so I feel it's a bit of a fairer <laughs> balance uh so yeah good deal of 300 meters or something in six miles not, not too bad and have you got lovely trails just straight out the door you can hit the yeah really lucky so we live on Dartmoor 
awesome. um, you know, right in the national park. So yeah, we've got trails straight from. I mean, you always come across the old road, don't you? But that you have to cross. Um, but uh, no trails straight from the from the door. So it's good. What's the wildlife situation on Dartmoor like? Is Wilfred likely to find bunnies or get so bunnies? Uh, yeah, bunnies are key. We should say that word quiet, shouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, sheep are good now. Um, it, mainly, it's deer and bunnies. I have lost him for about three hours before, and I had to go to work, so I just left him and hoped he, hoped he made his way home safely. No, because border terriers, do they do they go down rabbit holes and get stuck? Yeah, he, he's a bit like Pooh Bear. He gets halfway down a rabbit hole and his legs are sticking out the back. <laughs> he can't, can't quite make it all the way down, so you just have to pull him out by his legs. <laughs> Having said that, since he got castrated, he is much better. Oh, like, really? miraculously much better. Oh. That's interesting. Uh, he will come back when I call him. Not immediately, in his own time, but he will yeah. come back. When I'm running with dogs, as long as they're following the same, like, track as me, I don't mind, like, they're always around. Exactly. I, I, he's, got, um, he's got a cat bell on him as well, so I can hear him. Ah, wicked, yeah. I don't even have to look for him, as long as I can hear the bells. Hear the bells. Some of my mates, because round here, with the mountains, it's quite dangerous if dogs go off, because they can end up on cliffs, and one of them ended up the other side of the ski field, and a pista rang the number on the collar saying I've got your dog and it was like 10k away in a different ski resort the oh other day goodness. anyway but they've got gps's on their collars and yeah. then you can open up the app and see where your dog is oh okay that is brilliant I don't, I don't think I'd want to know I'd be like oh my god <laughs> he's never that far but he's just yeah on the scent and there's no getting his attention but he has he's getting better and you know it takes till about two and a half till they calm down a bit so they're T-Rexes. That's what we always call our dogs when they're younger. Till they're like two, they're just like a T-Rex and then they yeah. become a dog. Anyway, we've heard about Wilfred's running journey. <laughs> Let's see. You know, can you tell us a little bit about your... Gary and I were both looking at your power of 10 before um, before we came on and it scrolls back. Heavy research. Yeah. yeah. Um, can you tell us a little bit about your running journey from from roads to trails, where it started and where you are now. So I feel like I've been running for ages now. In fact, <laughs> I, I don't really know. Like that. That's that's really so there's reams, there's pages of it. Um, and also, I'm a, you know, I'm a steady Eddie. There's, there's not sudden, you know, excellence in results. It's pretty much the same time all the time. Consistency. No, your <laughs> consistency. Is Basically a diesel cool. engine, but without the turbo, I think. I don't know. So I started running probably when I was late teens to, to lose a bit of weight actually and then um, there was a local club we had no track or anything so I got into cross country quite early and I, I really enjoyed the cross country and essentially it was soon um, apparent that I was quite good at the long stuff so uh, or it suited me more I should say and then I went to university and I was in London and suddenly London Marathon was on my radar and so yeah it was basically from uh cross country to, to marathons and then um i stuck at the road for ages trying to get my marathon time down because there was this belief that if you move up to longer stuff you won't ever get your speed back i mean that's been disproven now by some seriously good runners but yeah i was a bit scared to move on up and just um lose that speed but um i did eventually because the the lure of the marathon de Saab was uh, too much and my husband and I said we both do it uh, so we saved up and entered and then that opened up a whole world of ultra running I didn't even know existed so uh, yeah since then we've just stuck at the ultras I have dipped back to do an odd marathon and still do the odd park run and stuff but yeah I'm sponsored now is um, by Scott and uh, you know it's their sponsorship is in line with the fact that I race ultras internationally really yeah i stick to that at the moment which is good but would you still do these sorry Eddie, i was just curious would you still represent your local club and take part in cross countries too yeah i still do yeah just done it it's just finished the league yeah it was good uh and also i represent my club in a local fell race series that dartmoor have just put on um mm -hmm. fell running isn't new to dartmoor but it's never really been the odd race here and there and there's this this chap from Tavistock called Richard Best that's put together an amazingly good series. And um, yeah, so I try and support that. And I still do the old marathon. I'm trying to work my way through the six world majors. 
Oh, awesome. Yeah. So, which are quite hard to get into, actually. Which and where you at? How many have you got left? Well, I've done Berlin and London, and I'm going to do Chicago in October. Uh, next year, hopefully, New York. Was it, was it last year when, if you could afford it, I think literally you could have done three of them back to back. They were so close because of all the COVID um, rollovers. That, yeah. Because I think was it London was moved, Boston was moved, and then obviously Chicago and New York think, are quite late on. I think Boston will be quite easy to get into, um, but New York and Tokyo. Yeah. I think I might have to pay like a tour company, <laughs> you know, to to get me in because it's just so hard to get in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's, oh, um, to... what's Chicago like? I don't know. I'll let you know in October. <laughs> it's supposed to be what? fast. It's a fast course. I've, I've heard. Yeah. No, I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, I booked it up really early on. I had loads of vouchers from British Airways to use up, <laughs> but it's expensive. You know, it's. Was it to enter London like forty quid or something? Oh, London is super cheap for a for a massive Isn't event. It? Like They're that. like four hundred dollars or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Expensive. <laughs> We're really fortunate to have London uh, as, like I say, a major. That is at that price, it's quite amazing. No, yeah. yeah. Nearly all your marathons are sub three. Um, all sub three, and I'm ho I hope to do Chicago yeah. sub three. Is that the sort of shape that you like to be in? Um, when you're sort of ultra fit as well do you kind of like to keep that speed yeah there? i definitely i like running fast so i always do a speed session once a week i like to know i can you know drop down to a park run if i want to um yeah i just like running fast i think i mean i don't like doing the speed work if it was just a natural gift that was given to me, I'd be quite yeah. happy with that. <laughs> but if I'm going to lose anything, it will always be my speed rather than my endurance. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I tick away at it. And I, th I think it's, I mean, I'm going to keep pushing to run a sub three marathon for as long as I can. Yeah, so I think it's just a pride thing. I just want to know I can. Personal pride thing, I should say. Yeah, if you're paying all that money to go to Chicago. Yeah, <laughs> drop out yeah exactly. If I don't get the climb I want, I'll throw my toys out of the pram now, I really. Gone are you probably you would have, but gone are the days when I'm like that now. Much more accepting. So, um, yeah, so I've got Highland Fling in April in Scotland, which um, now I've just had COVID. Was like, will I be going, won't I be going? Yeah, I was wondering about that. It's come at, like, almost the worst time because it's probably... Um... I've sort of missed all the long run windows. Yeah, yeah. But I, I had. I think so um, many people are in that situation. Probably on the start line, you'd find like eighty-five percent of people have said, "I've just had COVID. I missed." I know. Yeah. I, I think I'm just just going to accept it. What it is, I have had a good block of training, but I've just yeah. missed a few last yeah a couple of weekends. But I think I'm feeling like I'm recovering okay. And, and would that be is is the Highland Fling for for see, early in the year? Is this your kind of um, spring air race? Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, it was. No, I think it still is. Yeah. Um, yeah, I want to do, yeah, I want to give it a really good go. It's runnable, suits me. It's not too technical. Yeah. You know, it's in the same country, so you don't have to do heaps of travelling. Or well, I say the same country. Have yeah. you been on the course, Joe? Have I? Been on the course? No. No, I haven't. I've seen videos of it. You'll love it. It'll really suit you. Yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to that. Um, and then after that, so I'm going to do a Bob Graham round. Oh, I saw that, yeah. On oh, the Gary's, uh... got, Gary's got endless questions. <laughs> you want to I mean, about? yeah. You so right. Okay, <laughs> go on then. I'm going to give you five minutes to talk about Bob Graham. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, well, yeah. Are you, are you going to be anti-clockwise or clockwise? Clockwise. Yes. Uh, yeah. And have you managed to be out on the course yet? I'm just kind of thinking. I always ask this question about le on leg three, you've got your uh, Lord's Rake or you go broad stand. Have you, have you thought yeah, about that? Yeah, so I've been on bits of the course. Um, but I am obviously going to recruit people to navigate because one of the things, even if I've been on a course before, I have a tendency to just head down and that's yeah. it. <clears throat> um, I think it depends on the weather. But I think we're, we're going to stick to the, you know, the, in theory, the fastest lines. Okay. Because there's no, I mean, there are technical bits. The descents, some descents are quite technical. Yeah. And there's that bit where the, you've got a sheer drop either side. 
Um, is that Lord's right? No, that's... Um... Lord's Rake's like a bit of a, a gully, really. Then you take a yeah. left of this thing called the West Wall Traverse. Um, but yeah, if you did broad stand, it's a rope, basically. You need somebody to go ahead and yeah. put a rope down for you. Well, for, for me, anyway, I wouldn't I wouldn't go up there in a million years. <laughs> oh, I don't, I, yeah, I, um, to be honest, I don't think that was mentioned, rope. <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to remind myself now where... Um, <clears throat> yeah. We'll have to have a look. Yeah, no, there was no mention of a rope on uh, the bit we were talking about. That's for sure. Have a look. Um, Chat. Yeah. F- find out. Find out about that. But I think it's it's quite common these days for people. It depends if you're going for an FKT or not. I'm not too sure your aspirations for the day. Um, but yeah, it's quite common for people to do the Lord's Rake. Uh, oh, I'm blanking on the name. It might be Red Town. You can go down to Red Town with the detour and then you've got to climb back up again. Um, I don't think that is sensible to do. And also there's a few options on leg one, really, how you come off Blencathra. You've got your the parachute route, which is what Beth Pascal did, which you kind of just basically launch yourself down the screen. Um, and you've got Doddick and Halls Fell. There, there, yeah, there are a couple of choices. Um, yeah, I think Halls, Halls Fell is the one we were looking at. Yeah, yeah, I think that's yeah. that's probably the quickest. It, 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 for, for me personally, if it was raining and wet, I'd maybe avoid that. It could be a bit greasy, but you can. Um... Is Joe, jo, are you making notes? <laughs> no, no, I'm just looking at. Yeah, I'm just going back to see, but I can't see. Um, ah, Wolfred's biting my foot. <laughs> um, I can't see. Uh, yeah, there was no mention of the the rope, the rope. So I don't think we'll be doing that option. Okay. But uh, yeah, no horse fell. We did mention. <laughs> Um, I'm in other people's hands. They know it far better than I. I've sort of skimmed bits of it, but um, an opportunity came up, and it, it, this is more like my recce, to be honest. Okay. Um, um, we've got a 21-hour schedule, and I'd like to think I could get under 20 hours, but getting the group together was with a with a friend, and it was mainly his idea. So you yeah. know, I want to respect his his goals. And I see. Okay. His fiftieth birthday, so um. You also have to be mindful of of the people you have running with you. Um, <laughs> that I, I've been on a few Bob Graham runs where the the speed has been faster than the crew. <laughs> and, yeah. And yeah. Um, yeah, I've been burnt out on leg one. I didn't make it. Um, I didn't even make it to skid all with with one guy. So that was uh, wow. Okay. Yeah, you, you got a lot fast, and it's crazy because it's only I think you summited skid all maybe probably two or three minutes before I did, but that's quite a big gap when you're um, yeah. over four or five miles so yeah, well, yeah. Hopefully, yeah best of luck for that fantastic yeah no that would be good and then if i if it goes well then i'll go back and aim for a faster time so and what time of year again sorry was that <coughs> we've got a 21 hour schedule <clears throat> oh sorry t- time of year oh time of year may uh, 14th oh awesome oh well it's not long after the fling is it so you probably... no and in between that there's um in the county fell running championship, which I think might do is only 10k or something up in Lamberis. So. I bet that's the most painful of all three of the things. It will be the hardest, won't it? Against some fell running legends. Yeah. Your poor fling quads. <laughs> no. Covered. And then they'll start going downhill. Um, do you want to, should, Gary, do you want to track back a bit and talk about some of the stuff that Joe has done? Yeah, I, I saw, my goodness, um, went on the FKT dot com and is it the Dartmoor around the Cornish skyline and the Dartmoor 600s there's quite a lot to talk about there but yeah if you could <laughs> have a chat about um and I was really interested I think you've done them all supported too yeah so maybe a bit about the difference between supported and unsupported I guess the main one to talk about would probably be the Dartmoor round because it was the longest it was 74 miles with 4,000 meters so Dartmoor isn't you know it's nothing compared to the lakes but it yeah in lockdown that's what we had to play with so we yeah. made the most of it and there was a chap um on the eve of the millennium that set this route so that became the route really uh and i wanted to do it supported just to bring the community together in a time when the community wasn't together i hadn't yeah. seen each other for ages and obviously we could meet outside and that didn't contravene any rights you yeah. know uh re-covid so um yeah, we um we had a great great day. It all came together on the whole. Um and I had basically someone to run with me who'd already done it before. Okay. So old record holders or people that wanted to have a go at it all joined in and then yeah. it there was a bit of confusion of where it starts and finishes as anything. 
these FKPs, but I, I finished and started at a pub, so it meant we could all have a pint and some chips. After. <laughs> Apparently it finishes at the last tour, but that seemed pretty antisocial to me. So Yeah. <laughs> can, you, so, can you explain the route, perhaps, to anybody who might be, well, semi-local to Dartmoor or knows Dartmoor? Well? Yeah, so it, it starts in a place called Meavy at the Royal Oak Pub, or, or the actual the oak tree, and then uh, uh, it heads out... <clears throat> essentially going north, so uh, clockwise. Uh, and there is a little bit of Dartmoor that misses out, ha um, Haytor and Houndtor being a couple of main tours that you would have thought it would incorporate, but it doesn't. And then um, the, the big deals are the river crossings because our rivers are some of the high, quickest to rise and fall in the yeah. UK. So you can go across it and, they, they, you know, there's courtesy of the olden days, people put stepping stones down. Um, and you can see them, and then on the way back, they're completely covered. So I think the guy that set the the round when he did it had to use ropes to cross the rivers. Ooh. So, yeah, I didn't really want that at all. I wasn't prepared <laughs> for that. So, um, no, so it was good. And uh, we had, uh, uh, you know, I'd done all the reckeys and everything, and you know, like the back of my hand. And then on the day, it was like pea soup, couldn't see a thing. Oh, no. It was awful. And I say I knew it like the back of my hand because it meant that I didn't take a map. So there was one small bit where I went out where I thought I was going, managed to do a loop and came back to exactly the same place. <gasps> oh, my goodness. It, time. <laughs> it's amazing how when the fog comes down, yeah. something you think you know so well becomes foreign. It's, it's, it's quite spectacular, really. Yeah, no, it was, it was so frustrating. And then when the, the, lift, the mist cleared, the rain came. And then, but it was then it was sunny, you know, it was had all the seasons. Yeah, weather. exactly. So, uh, no, it was good. So that was really good. It was really satisfying to break the record. And then um, I think the next week or something ridiculously close, someone else went and broke it. But Oh, stop it. It was fine. <laughs> you had your glory week. <laughs> it was pretty close. So. Um, what's it like, the Dartmoor? I'm, I'm from the northeast, so it's not something where I've ever, not somewhere I've ever been. Is it quite barren? So, um, it's um, the hills are, you know, no more than I don't know 300 meters or something. I mean, the highest point on Dartmoor is 600 meters. Yeah. Um, so they're quite gradual, but you have this awful tusky grass called baby's heads. Oh, yeah. That's what we call them. I think yeah. other people just call it elephant grass or something. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're really thick tussocks, about the size of a baby's head. Oh, and um, you think you're you're you balanced on top of it, but you haven't. You've fallen down the side, and the yeah. amount of times I've been running along trying to dodge these, and you fall over, come back up again. And... So you have a horrible ground, which really wrecks your ankles. Um, lots of bogs, so carpet bogs and things. Yeah. Like I was running along, not in the round, but in many a recce, chatting, and then someone's like, where are you? And then where I'm going down the bog. <laughs> <We're steep. laughs> yeah. Awesome. Lots of peat. But, um, yeah, it's, um, there are, when, when you get onto a trail, it's pretty runnable. Yeah. Um, but on the whole, it's a uh, single track, Sheep track. Sheep. I'd be like, hey, we're on a path, and my friends are like, this is not a path. I'm like, yeah, well, it's sheep track, yeah. track, you know, that sort of thing. Um, so variable, lots of yeah, variety. To be fair. And is the round um, going back a bit again? Is the round? Is it a course or like say with the Bob Graham round? It's it's become a course because that's the most efficient yeah. route. But all you have to do is hit the summits. Yes. Yeah. Exactly that. Um, and so I recceed it just to make sure I was on the quickest lines, yeah. um, really. Although there's always that compromise between going over really rubbish ground or going, you know, a bit longer to do the tracks. And I've learned to do the tracks now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So some people are just really good at running over tusky mm -hmm. grass. Mm -hmm. And I actually think it's helped by slightly longer legs. So some of the, the taller men I run with don't seem to have a problem with it. You know, they sort of skip over it. Yeah. And I'm left like you know, wandering in the darkness. <laughs> but um, <laughs> so I tend to stick to the tracks. And after, you know, also when you're tired, you can get really quickly frustrated with it. And then yeah, well, not moving forward quickly. <clears throat> and then you feel yeah. So um, do, you need, do you need a witness too for the, for the, for the summits or it's just GPS? Yeah, I had, uh, I had someone with me on every leg and I also had a tracker. So. Um, oh, I wicked, yeah. 
Yeah, so it's good. Um, there's usually a trig point or a rock nearest the top or something, but some of the tours that were summits, uh, I think you just had to touch the base of them. They were quite scrambly. So no, so it was good. So that entertained me for the summer. And then the other two that were much shorter, sort of three hours, um, whereas this was 14 hours. Yeah. They're just literally little routes, sort of 20 miles. Um, but it was good because it just... You know that people are inventing them, all, you know, ideas all the time. But those those two are the main ones in the southwest. I think it's quite good that you know you mentioned about the time on those ones. That sometimes people get these FKTs or these big epic journeys, coast to coast, or the twenty four hours say on the Bob Graham round. But yeah, to be there, there's loads out there, and there are two three hours. They're not always these epic. No, exactly. And it's you know some people just don't have time for that. It was a real logistical thing organising around yeah. and, and discovering this sorting out the Bob Graham round, even though it's done been done so many times before. I'm still trying to get people, you know, you go onto the forums and you ask people and then, I'm, you know, it's amazing how much time COVID's given me, but I've been able to sit down and work out the logistics plan so none of the paces get stuck without transport at the end and things like that. So, it's exhausting. That yeah. side of it is quite... I don't want to let anyone down in terms yeah. of, you know, sorry, the dog's about to pull the cable out from under me. <laughs> oh... No, but he's like, you're not giving me any attention. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And from your perspective, what do you know what the difference is between a supported and an unsupported? Um, so uh, in, in my mind, unsupported would be literally carry everything yourself. Yeah. Do it on your own. Um, and supported is, well, you still might carry your own stuff, but you are supported in some way. So there might yeah. be car logistics for you or... Something like that. Yeah, everything I've done has been supported. And I have carried my own stuff. Uh, yeah, Russell, Russell Bentley on the on the show and he was doing an unsupported Paddy Buckley, wasn't he? And then they and then they and just didn't supported. allow it because somebody filmed him during the round. Oh gosh. Yeah. So then he was like, he wasn't allowed because you had people near you, even yeah. though they didn't. That's so. ridiculous. I found that a bit. I don't, you know, we weren't privy to all the found details. That a bit annoying too. I found <laughs> it was really harsh. Surely, I can understand if someone's left you some food out or they've given you some water, but just to video you. Yeah. From what we understand, yeah. I think he was barely aware they were there half the time. Um, but yeah, it seemed a bit harsh on the face of it. No, so. that's terrible. Oh no, you'd be so cross. Yeah. Well, I think he'd actually asked questions before he'd attempted his round and it was initially all okay, but then afterwards it wasn't okay. So I'm not too sure the well, full... That's what comes if you're a social media celebrity and you're trying to make films of yourself. She yeah, like Joe. I don't fall into that bracket. Just, <laughs> like Joe. Just don't <laughs> quietly. Um, can, can I ask you a few little questions about the Trans Rocky run that you did? Was it last year? It was last year, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Because um, I get confused because I remember seeing all your stuff on the Dartmoor round, um, and then I and then but all the fo- sort of past two or three years have rolled into one. Can you? I this is a, on my bucket list. This race, I just looked at it actually, and it's sold out already this year. But can you tell us a little bit about this race? Um, because you do it in a pair, don't you? You don't have to. You can actually do it on your own. Okay. But I just thought it would be nice to go with someone. Uh, so I was actually entered on my own. And then I've got a friend. So there's, I guess there's, there's a bit of a story with respect to the fact that I've got a friend that um, was a boy and now a girl. And she can't legitimately race. Okay. But she she could race with me as a pair because I would be the one that would count. So she'd have to wait for me, if that made sense. Well, that's what I thought would happen. I thought I'd be the one that would slow us down. So the times posted would essentially be mine. In actual fact, what happened, she had a nightmare. And I just had to carry her for this for the race. <laughs> she had an absolute, she just, I don't know. Um, well, we, we managed to get through it. That's all that really matters. But, um, so um, the first day was fine. And then after that. Uh, Is it at altitude? It's at altitude, bits are. And it's, um, you know, lots of elevation. Uh, it's only 20 miles a day. It's six days of running. So 20 miles a day, 120 miles for the whole week. And the elevation was about 6,000 metres. Um, but you, you obviously get rest in that time because you run in the morning and then you don't have to carry your own food or pack of clothing or anything they carry it all for you, just the stuff you want to eat for the run. So Wilfred's now trying to pull my sock off. Oh, God, he's just 
pain today. The one time I need him to go to his bed. The naughtiest (laughs) joke we've ever had on the podcast. (laughs) Um, We got out there and it's quite a small group of people. It's only about 300 people. And it's very much a family atmosphere. Um, I would say that 50% of the people have done it before. And and quite a big emphasis, I'd say, on not necessarily party, but social. Okay. Lots of people that just want to enjoy it. And I know they're trying to change that. So they want the elite runners to run in a pair because they love the challenge that brings. Hmm. As we discovered, um, (laughs) you can't run through a checkpoint without your partner. So I would run on the first 10 kilometers to get a run in. And then I'd have to wait for my partner. Sometimes that was like 20 minutes. Oh, wow. And then I would run on again and wait, because what we worked out is if I just ran with her, it made her more frustrated that she felt she was holding me back. So in order to get a a run, then I just went on. So, yeah, it it wasn't the best in terms of performance, um, but it was a good experience and obviously um, got to see a part of the world I haven't seen. But they've had some incredible runners. I think this year they've... Again, they've got a really good lineup. I'm tempted to go back and do it um, solo. Oh, I don't know if I'd go solo. I did like the team aspect of running with someone else, despite throwing up lots of challenges and frustration. Um, it, I was looking at it and I was going through like my mates on in my head, like who can I WhatsApp to say, do you want to <laughs> do this? And who who do you want? Because you do you share a tent as well with them? You share a tent, yeah. And quite it's intense. freezing at night, so you want to get to know that person quite well because you do want to have like, <laughs> you want snuggles at night. Okay, that that ticks off a few. <laughs> <laughs> you might just be husband. Absolutely freezing at night because the other race that they organise is Transalpine, yeah, which is a lot more serious. Yeah, yeah. and um, people that had done it <clears throat> said definitely on that one choose the choose the hotel option. Stop it! That's it now. Sounds like this where I love Rex in the other room. <laughs> He's not talking to Gary. <laughs> <laughs> no. Gosh. I love the sound of this multi uh, stage. We had Lizzie Hawker on <coughs> a couple of weeks ago, and uh, she has the multi day event, the uh, Monterosa, and that just sounds phenomenal too. I really like the sound. That's of- quite up your street, Joe. That uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. I I really like multi stage races. I've got my eye on the one in Sri Lanka actually, um, which we were meant to do twenty twenty, and then it got cancelled and. Yeah, I just never got back to... I would have done it this year, actually, but it was too close to Highland Fling. Yeah. So, um, yeah. I, love, I love a multi-stage, but because when you do an ultra, you don't actually see or talk to anybody, and by the time you finish, you can't see or talk to anybody, and you just, like, get wheeled off somewhere. <laughs> but, like, on a multi-stage, you get to, like, hang around, like, yeah. shoot the, you know... Yeah, and um, I've gone through my stages of them. It's one of my first one was the Marathon Saab, and I took that really seriously. So I didn't, and also you, you know you want to conserve energy, so I didn't really spend much time hanging out after that. And the next one I did was um, the Coastal Challenge. Oh, I love that one. That sounds that, beautiful. That yeah. is exceptional. They fit if you do one, definitely do that one. Um, but I, again, I took it quite seriously. I just been thrown the possibility that Scott might want to sponsor me so I, I felt I wanted to do really well and there's Anna Frost and Julia Botiger that were going to race and so I was probably they probably put most people probably walked away from that thinking well she's really serious but, <laughs> but I, I, I guess it came I was so recently coming from a road running background when it is really serious mm-hmm. I mean the contrast yeah. between road running and trail running is huge in terms you, of you'd never strike up a chat with someone during a marathon be like so where are you from <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly and, or you know friend you're not friendly afterwards you know it's all about the times what time did you do and yeah so yeah I get it, it was a bit of a transition to go from road to to trail much better oh yeah obviously i have no regrets whatsoever but i <coughs> still throw in the, the odd road race and still don't hang around afterwards generally gary do you want to talk about the training then now it's a good link to go from um yeah well because yeah you i suppose you will be 
pretty much tapering now for Highland Fling, but it's always hard to see what would a typical week be like, but I don't know, that kind of does fluctuate. But yeah, what does your week look like, I suppose, from a running point of view? I think you said about doing at least one uh, speed session, but strength work, you use a treadmill, I think, as well. You're not just purely out on the, on the, hitting the tarmac and the trails. Yeah, so um, I still work in miles rather than hours of training or vertical game. I think you're the only person that's said that. Yeah. Do you have a coach, Joe? I do. I, I do. Quite recently, I, um, David Roach in Oh, yeah. The Happy, po- Happy Runner podcast, is he? Oh. Yeah, it talks really, really fast. Yeah, really, yeah. Really <laughs> and super lovely in terms of just telling everyone how awesome they are, which makes me feel so much better. <laughs> um uh, so yeah, I do. And um, I got a coach because what I'm not good at doing is holding back. So I can motivate myself. I have no problem with motivating myself, but there are times when I just want advice on what I should do or what I shouldn't do in this situation. So for example, now coming back from COVID, I feel really fine, but can I go and do a park run tomorrow because my park run is five miles away i run down do it and run back so the whole thing's about 15 miles is that okay or not don't know <laughs> <laughs> i mean i think i know what the answer would be but sometimes i just want to be told that yeah so there's no questions so an average week for me probably is about um i don't know 60 miles a week uh plus 10 minus 10 and then um i have one day off a week I will do one speed session a week and then another type of speed session, but maybe tempo or threshold reps. Uh, I'll do strength conditioning uh, once a week and abs, abdominal work once a week, twice a week. And then the rest is just sort of steady runs. During the week, it's harder to get out and get some hills so I just tend to stick to the same routes just because I've got to get them run before work and then at the weekends like most people we can get a bit longer would that day off would that be something that is that say David Roach's philosophy with training or is that something that you would do before you I've always had a day off a week yeah um I can completely survive without one but what I tend to do is just grind myself down slowly so when I before I picked up covid i actually just thought i was run down i mean that's what it felt like i just felt as though i was run down i looked back and i thought yeah that'll probably be about right about right at the time yeah day off a week i love running but i also love a day off just knowing you don't have to get into running kit that day have a shower put jeans on i know i know other people really struggle with that but for me i don't at all and i don't tend to train twice a day anymore unless i go to the gym that's another session. And when I go to the gym, I try, I lift heavy. I probably should go twice a week because every time I go, I'm sore the next day or the yeah. day after that. But it's just logistics, really, just getting to the gym. Um, and I know I could do home-based work, but I've been lifting heavy for so long now. It feels, it doesn't feel as though it's the same workout. Yeah, um, I'm the same. Like, I have to go to the gym and it has to be heavy. If I do band work, it's almost like I can't really get any um, a need resist. I think it might yeah. be an age thing, maybe. I re- I just really like lift- lift- and I also I I like the confidence that I can do it. But also, my, if I'm going to get injured, it will be my tendons, and tendons like lifting heavy. So I stick. You know, a lot of it's a preventative thing. It's mm. quite hard to keep if you're just doing stuff at home. Also, you do it's even plateau. I know with my own little setup that unless I the space and just keep buying weights it's a limiting factor while if you go to the gym in theory you can just exactly yeah so um yeah I mean I always say we just need a squat rack but I don't know where we put it (laughs) (laughs) but um, I like going to the gym though it makes me feel like like a proper athlete as well (laughs) and they do best movies at the gym (laughs) (laughs) I, I like the gym it's like I have no problem with running on a treadmill so I do have a treadmill at home now uh, I have no problem with using it. So we don't, what we don't have here is flat, straight roads. Mm, mm. If I want to do some speed work, probably a legacy from my road running days, I want to know that I get the distance all the time right and yeah. nothing's going to... So I'm not, like, mowed down by a dog or... Actor. 
yeah, something. Um, I just think I just do it on the treadmill. Yeah. What does a typical <clears throat> treadmill session look like? What does an average treadmill? Yeah, what's yeah. a typical treadmill session? Look like? oh, I don't know, um, 10 by 3 minutes or something. Um, yeah. Classic. <laughs> mile reps, I don't know. The, the sessions I always set myself were mile reps, 6 by a mile. And then, but since I've been coached by David, he's never actually set me mile reps. So, <laughs> just thinking about it. Do you have a favourite type of session, you know, would you kind of gravitate to something? No, I quite like just easy running, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's, no, there's I, nothing like an easy hour, is there? With the dog, easy hour. It's like no mental thought or preparation needing to go into that. No, I didn't even take my watch today. It was nice. No, just beautiful. Oh. Easy hour is my favourite. It's not, And then you can just come home and go on with your day. You're not yeah. like having to lie in ice tendons and stuff if I have to do. <laughs> um, but then, I, you know, I do feel, I do like... So, for example, my, my run down to the park, run hard three miles and run back, because the session's done for you. You, ju you yeah. just have to start when everyone else starts. What's harder is motivating myself to go out to the treadmill and think, right, I've got to ramp it up. The pace. I know, exactly. Parkrun is such a good resource. Like you see, if you run to the parkrun, if you're lucky enough to run like runnable distance and then have a hard three mile and then uh, like jog home, what a, what a resource that's out there every it's Saturday. It's amazing, yeah. Um, and I've also recently got um, been lucky enough to have a friend that's motivated to come when I run, she'll cycle. Oh. So she uses her mountain bike. And actually, going uphill, it's quite hard for a cyclist to keep up with a runner. Yeah, yeah. Um, so she um, she finds it a good workout. And then we can add loops in where I, I race the flat bit and she'll go up and down or something. So it's a good workout for both of us, but it's really motivating because I've got to beat the bike and she's got to be <laughs> on it. So that, I, mean, I really like that sort of thing because it completely takes the pressure off. Uh, no, not the cable. <laughs> Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's not long enough. It's no. This is great. <laughs> Has Wilfred done his first part run yet? No. No, I, I don't know if I could. Anything fast, I think it would annoy me that he is a little late with me. Yeah. No, because yeah. he's like, oh, let's run really hard. Oh, no, there's a bottom to sniff over there. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> a lot of bottom. So run. It's ex and then I get frustrated because it's my run. Yeah. So I, I make sure I'm in the mood for his run and my run. Yeah, and then yeah you've got to, I don't, if I, if I know I'm going to get angry with my dogs, I don't take them if it's a session or an uphill session and I know that there's a potential for me to call them twats. Yeah. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he thought his name was something else for the first six months of his life. So <laughs> we're just getting um, an even keel now. Can you tell us a little bit, you mentioned it earlier on that uh, Scott approached you to um, to run for their team. Can you tell us a little bit about how that relationship um, came about, your work with them, and perhaps also a little bit about uh, your favourite bit of Scott Kit? Yeah, so, no, I was, um, so the Marathon to Saab, I met a chap called Ian Corliss, and he had a connection with Scott. So when it came to running the Coastal Challenge, which he all, also organises for athletes to go out there, he mentioned the the Scott connection and obviously jumped at the chance and haven't looked back. How long have you been with them? Well, that was 2015. Wow. It's it's not years now. Yeah. A contract, isn't it? Because especially nowadays, it seems that athletes change. It seems I, know, to be I don't think I'm that sort of athlete. I'm not that good, really. I mean, I just plod away and I'm consistent. <sighs> And when I said to, because obviously last year on the team was Ruth Croft. And when I said to, you know, them, I don't, I'm not, I can never be as good as Ruth. You probably want some young and up and coming people. I completely understand. And they said, no, that I appeal to the, just the average runner. And, and that the, for them, that's quite a big market just to push the gear out there. You don't have to be super good, <clears> you know, to wear it. You can just appeal to the people that just enjoy running and not necessarily competing, etc. They're the people who ultimately pay for all of this stuff, really. You know, you yeah. might see your Kipchoge's with these vapor flies, but it's people like me that go out and buy the buy the trainers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I mean they has got under no illusions that I'm brilliant and that's fine. But they said I'm approachable and that's good enough for them. So if people want to ask about gear, then I'll always answer. Yeah, I haven't 
I haven't sought out any other sponsors. You know, I know people do because they're probably looking to earn money on it, but that's never been my priority. And, and it's very hard to earn money from a sponsorship. I know North Face have just offered big contracts to people this year, but I think people are the company, especially now, they're not they're not in the position to offer a lot of money. No, yeah. I've got a job, so yeah, yeah. I've got yeah. my job earns me my money. Running is a hobby, and I'm coming, you know, being sponsored does put a little bit of pressure on you in terms of having to maybe put posts out when you're not in the mood to do that or um but it the fact they're not paying me means well if I can't I can't you know it's not the end of the world um and I, I yeah I, I mean it's ridiculous to think someone pay, pay me to run it's <laughs> it's yeah couldn't even couldn't even comprehend that so um no so I'm happy that Scott and this this the sponsorship contract actually does end at the end of the year. So it'll be interesting to see what happens next year, if they're happy just to keep me ticking over or... If they're approachable or if they go, oh, you're really grumpy now. Really grumpy now. <laughs> well, the, 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 it's hard because although I do post regularly and I think my posts are pretty cool, to be honest, <laughs> I cannot generate any followers at all. So I think there must be um, an element that you have to give up quite a lot of time and really push it mm-hmm. and maybe push stories. And, and that's just not me. You know, yeah. I'm pretty busy every day. I have a job and other stuff going on and yeah, it's just not me. I feel really false doing that. Yeah, so. I totally get that. I think if you're not, if your heart's not in it, you'll soon be found out. And often, and if you, if you, if it's, you don't want to share the minutiae, is that the right word, of your life with people, that's not you, you know. You've no, got to... I don't think it is. And if people want to meet up for a run, I'm more than happy to do that. And then I'll invite them by for a cup of tea and a piece of cake. You know, I'm more than happy, but just these people that you don't really know. Um, not real. And yet that's how you're judged by how many likes you get on a post or how many followers. Yeah, I, find, I do find it hard. I'm, Mm, mm. I've but, always been like I've not been prepared to sell my soul down that way. <laughs> um, tell us a bit about the Scott Kit Joe, the new Super Track, which is their main trail, you know, rugged trail shoe, is brilliant. It's really good. Yeah, I really like it. Michelle um, is just sending me one because I I run in the ultra tracks a lot around here on the Alpine, like the dry, yeah, hard pack trail. It's really really good, but it is quite heavy. The heavy and shoe. Yeah, it's a heavy shoe, and so I'm looking for like a. Sp- I'm doing the spine next year, so I'm looking for like a bit lighter and also in the wet. Yeah, and apparently these are the super track are. Um... They're so yeah, so good, and so I wear that. And then the other one, it would be my, from so my faster races would be my um, the Kinabalu RC, which is uh, they they brought it out with a view to the Western States. Okay, um, that so that sort of runnable groomed trails. Not that I've managed to get into Western States yet, but still, oh, it's still, still struggling, good. still flying. <laughs> <laughs> the shoe's ready, it's just I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> that could be Scott's tagline. Are you ready with it? What did you wear for your um for the Dartmoor um the Dartmoor round? Super track. track. Yeah. yeah. It was okay. it was for good. I didn't have to change it. No bliss. I had nothing wrong with my feet whatsoever. And it's got um, enough cushioning for that. Yeah, I wore it for UTMB as well. Did you? And I thought it was absolutely fine. Yeah. I really love the just from a, a design point of view, the whoever is on the design team for Scott, they come up with some fan, fantastic looking kit. The black and the lime. It's just like, yeah, I wouldn't mind being on the start line with, with that one. I'd, that'd make me run about half a minute a mile faster, I think. Okay. Just no, <laughs> for the first good. few miles anyway. It is really good. I do love putting it on. Um yeah. The mark um the chat that was sort of looking after the athletes over the last the few previous years is actually um he's called martin gaffari he's, he's ruth croft's boyfriend actually but he came up with some of these ideas and he was a good runner himself so he yeah. and uh, understands the needs but the kit yeah good concept of the black and yellow yeah no it's good i like putting it on the kit's good i can't really i think they're changing bits and bobs all the time so the packs are being slightly changed they're just bringing out a new one now yeah, it is. It is really good kit. I feel, you know, really lucky to be able to to race in it, and feel proud to race in it. I remember I don't, I don't North... think they put themselves out enough in the UK market, Scott, because it seems like Innovate and other they sponsor a lot of British athletes that are quite high profile and quite high profile on social media. Yeah, 
kit is real like the scott <clears throat> trainers i only change my trainers because of the way that i run and i rub the one of the back heels down because of my um slightly dodgy biomechanics i never have to change them because they feel worn out if anything i find with scott trainers the more i wear them the more they become like slipper like and i never want to change them i know yeah exactly i wear them around the house for a day and then i run in them yeah and then that's pretty good i think um it's it's interesting because obviously they do sponsor good athletes, but good athletes don't always have high profiles. Yeah. And I noticed they've taken on Anna Frost this year and her athletic days are over, but she's still got a high profile to I guess get the get the word out there about the brand. Mm. Um and in the UK they were they're in discussion with some good athletes, but they don't necessarily have high yeah, yeah. social media profiles. Um we look seeing you on the fling yeah yeah exactly full flow. i'm not sure you'll be in full vest and shorts with the scottish weather whether you've heard that i've heard that <clears throat> it when you is it midgy is it midgy weather this time of year no, no it's just cold and it starts really early so you might be in arm warmers i think i when arm i start warmers, that's arm what I warmers. Do. yeah arm warmers vest i'm sure i remember beth saying it's one of the coldest she's ever been in a race so it was, it was awful the rain you know that four, yeah, she had four that. degrees cold yeah. wet but like today you'd be fine more weather you'd be fine you'd be like, yeah, oh. like today <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> okay. oh, Joe, thank you so much for all your time today what a lovely chat um, yeah no thank you that's yeah, been thank you. we've got just five more really quick answer questions they might divulge into more because i there's a few things but we'll try and keep them super quick uh, and they're sort of tailored to your life a little bit. Here we go. Is there anything that you are binge watching on, say, Netflix, Amazon, or Disney at the moment? Uh, I just started watching Ozark. <gasps> oh, Gary loves that. I got... That gave me a headache, Joe. I was so stressed out. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've just yeah, I've just finished, just coming out to finishing the first series. Yeah. So oh my that's, god! Yeah, that's been what I'm watching at the moment. A bit traumatic, weren't? Is that the one you're a bit traumatized by, Gary? Yeah, I thought I was going to have a panic attack. It was so it was so stressful. <laughs> um, and then just finished watching Peaky Blinders. Obviously, that's got to be. Uh, well, you're much more hardcore than me, Joe. Well, the- it was a bit hardcore, actually, but. Joe, our, our Netflix recommendations would be pretty similar, I think. <laughs> yeah, if you didn't share an account, I'd be like, she's been watching Bridgerton, selling Sunset. Ah. <laughs> I know, I tried, tried Bridgerton, I couldn't do it, no. No, it takes a very, very blonde <clears throat> brain of no... Uh... I do love Ozark. I just it it takes. I need to build up to it. Um, we did season one, and I think we started season two. But it's yeah. Yeah, I need a break sometimes. High stress TV. Yeah. High stress. I'm like, I need a break. I can't. Can we watch some films? Favorite race ever. Gosh. Favorite race ever. Thing is, I'm probably going to go back to the race that went the best and that was the ccc yeah we haven't we talked about that we had such good memories of it and the finish line was it was so phenomenal the feeling the experience and obviously i've run that bit of the course since and it hasn't had the same experience so i don't like it <laughs> a, bit, a bit different finishing utmb to finishing ccc though yeah <laughs> yeah so that it, it was just everything went right the weather was amazing you know it was warm as you ran into the evening and uh, and it was a race it was a proper race it didn't feel like an ultra just slog it out get it done yeah it was literally gosh i've got you know 10 miles to go and she's only two minutes you know we came into the last aid station together and it was a real battle so to me it was a proper race in if, you, if, um, if UTMB said you can do UTMB or CCC again, which one would you do? The thing is, I still feel I've got unfinished business at UTMB, but I've just let it go for a bit. I loved your UTMB, though. You were so gritty. So <laughs> proud of you. I know, so but proud of you for finishing just, that. It's an eating contest, and I, I love running <laughs> more than I love walking and more than I love eating, I yeah. think. So it's I find that a real battle, but it doesn't mean that I want to give it up at it. But whereas the CCC, you could, you know, stick to your gels. Yeah. And if you didn't eat, it didn't matter because it wasn't long enough to yeah. really get you down. Um, so I think I think I'll go with CCC as being my favourite. 
they all sound awesome to be fair <laughs> but yeah they are to be fair <laughs> i'm not complaining <laughs> most common injury you see in your physio cl clinic i'm gonna say gosh most common injury so i'm really lucky i have a lot of variation at work i obviously treat a lot of runners because runners want to be treated by a runner I can't imagine if you lived like in the next village to me and it'd be like you Google sports physio and you come up, I'd be like, get in, I'm moving. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm lucky and I do treat a lot of runners who travel quite a fair way to come and see Oh, me. yeah, I'm contemplating um, a fight. <laughs> and then um, I also am in with a couple of spinal consultants. So I see some really grotty necks and backs that they don't want to be operated on or they can't be operated on. And, and they really need your help. They come in in a bad way. So I do see a lot of necks and backs. And then um, I also work for the English Institute of Sport. So I only treat funded athletes. So I see a lot of niggles that sort of ticks away that they can't fully train. But out of all the runners and the athletes, tendons are, the, are the, probably the biggest, most common injury. And then the runners... I, I, I would have said Achilles a few, even a year ago, but now less Achilles and more um, just to do with biomechanics, so odd tendon injuries. Like, But maybe they're, they're odd because people have come to me because other physios haven't got them better, I don't know. So yeah. I get all the, all the odd injuries. <laughs> you know, it helps so much having been a runner and probably having had a multiple you know, niggles and injuries that you can go oh yeah i get oh yeah let's i get that let's try in there that perhaps exactly. other physios and so i found um ways to treat an injury that you wouldn't be able to find in a book because it took me some working out to do it myself um yeah. and yeah, i mean i'm still learning for sure but um what's, what's the clinic you work at called joe let's give it a shout out so i know well, i work from home now okay. which is great so um i have three days a week at home we've converted a room and then i work in exeter at the ocean clinics at ocean physio and rehab um which sort of gives me the the daily grind of people's just aches and pains and problems but really valuable physios yeah, which gets unique as well don't you and exactly also and then at home generally people message me privately i don't advertise they message me and it, it, it goes from there so mainly it's runners or triathletes or something but you know, last week no not last week i was ill but the week before i was up in liverpool at the gb gymnastic championships for four days looking after gymnasts and it was just acute injuries it was it was actually quite stressful. We had one potential neck injury, which we had to ex yeah. extricate off. And then we had three broken oh, bones. So oh, yeah, yeah. it was fairly full on. So most of it was sort of trauma management as opposed to physio. But yeah, another good, good, good for you it's as well. Good, it was good. Good. Long days. Well, those, I mean, it was like 8 a.m. to 9 p.m. So really long days. Would that work take you like, I don't know, say to, like an, an Olympic cycle? So you'd go whenever the next Olympics are, you'd, you'd, you'd go all the way through today? Yeah, it, in theory, actually getting a job for the Olympics is really hard. You have to, even if you're in that world and you're treating those athletes, you have to apply for it as a job in its own right. Okay. And you have to have had some previous games experience before, whether that's Commonwealth or, and the problem with those roles is they're all voluntary. Yeah. You're not, you're not, none of the roles are paid. So you could be away for a month and they'll pay you expenses. Hmm. So for me, that's self-employed. If I don't work, I don't get paid. It's really hard. To, oh my goodness, yeah. I'd like to go to the Olympics, but actually I'm not sure I want to go for free. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's hard. So, but I'm, I do what I can. So, I'm going up to cover the World Gymnastic Championships in uh, October. So, that would be good. And then, so getting something like that on your CV might help me. You know, yeah, apply for the jobs, Olympics, and things. But yeah. Favorite strength and conditioning exercise? Oh, I love a squat. I knew you were going to, as a physio, I was like, just. <laughs> I love a heavy squat. So, I weigh 50 something kilograms. And I'll squat 80. Ooh. I love it. I love a heavy squat. I have a bench behind me, so I don't go below no, lower than 90 degrees. Yeah. And then I'll take maybe 20 kilos off and do a what we call a Bulgarian squat. So your foot is left behind on the bench and you're in a split stance position. Yes. And I love that sort of thing because I really feel that's directly related to running. 
sense and you can feel it then when you, you run. feel the strength is going yeah. through your whole body and then down through each leg you feel so strong when you're like squatting that heavy don't you when you push up and you're like yeah i got this 80k <laughs> island fling record no problem I can and you've got to you know breathe with it it incorporates everything and the other the, the other exercise i love that i will never get any better at because i don't practice enough is a pull up I think to be able to lift your, there's something about being able to lift your own body weight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like a pull up. I've always, I've always been able to do a pull up. I think it's from my mum and dad had this bar in their garden in Germany. They have these like carpet banger things before it must be before. Anyway, I used to pull myself up on this bar and swing around it when I was younger. And I can still do, oh, I can do go it. to the gym and pull up, do like 10 pull ups. No way. There's nothing, there's nothing I enjoy more than walking to the gym. And you know, there's guys, like big muscle guys, like, <laughs> and I can, I am like, okay, excuse me, can I just, uh, <laughs> can I just do my 10 now? I don't, I don't, that's all I can do that I get tired. I don't think it's so much muscle. I think it's a practice, it's like a press up that is a very much practiced exercise than a. Yeah. Yeah. And the, the thing is, as we get older, women typically don't have triceps or lats. Yeah, we just don't use them. So yeah. we've got really good. I can like a uh, tricep extension really heavy. I'm not sure that's really very good for running, but it's good for the old poles, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Gonna, I think that's probably from skiing as well. Going, oh, yeah, yeah. Now I've got I'm going to order a chin up bar now. <laughs> no, yeah, Gary, you're like, you can do 10. <laughs> Give me my door for him. <laughs> Well, I did that, and then it's it fell off, and I <laughs> I got a bit shocked by that, the fact that I landed. <laughs> so, yeah, I've removed it, and now I just use the one in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Do you, do you have a favourite trail snack? Oh. Hmm. The thing is, I'd like to say I do, and then when you're in an ultra and you think, I'll get out my favourite trail snack now, and you don't like it. I don't want it anymore. I don't want it anymore. What I want is cheese or... Yeah something you know completely that you wouldn't normally think of but when I go running here there's a couple of things I always take there's these pouches that supernatural fuel have bought out and they're yeah. basically like baby food so it's all natural which is great and I'll always take a couple of them different flavors and they're from Devon as well so that makes me very happy um and I do always take a flapjack and at the moment, um, I'm getting them from um, Mountain Fuel. Okay, mm. yeah. So they do some good flapjacks. Ginger is a good one. Um, and then I'll always put an emergency gel in. And I get a variation of them from... So I'm actually sponsored by a company called Com Fuel, which is King of the Mountains Fuel. And they basically sell all the gels and anything you could ever want in terms of energy. Yeah. Under one roof. So then I can just make a selection of what I fancy. So it depends. Cool. Yeah, which is good because then you can have a variation. You don't have to have the same. I do like a flapjack. Cheer, George. Joe's going to be sent some after this. And she's like, That's it. So I used to make my own flapjacks. Uh, and I do still just, you know, as in nice afternoon tea flapjacks. Mm -hmm. So I try to make my own flapjacks for energy. But to make success and then if they're not thought just buy them it's very hard to make I mean, they're really hard to make they're either really dry and they glued your mouth together and that would be oh, yeah. like your jaws would ache more than your legs <laughs> or uh, they were really crumbly and you may as well have just taken a bag of granola yeah yeah um and so i thought well i just you know they were based on you know what what the pros are using to make them so i just thought well i'll go with what Employ somebody, give us exactly. some <laughs> So it's variable. But so, yeah, no, so I'll always take food and I always take more than I think because if I go running with other people, what I've learned is that they always eat it. <laughs> I don't think that's the idea. I think <laughs> but sometimes you, I've always been to places, you know, that it, with people and I'm not great at getting the distance right. So if, say we're doing a 10 mile and it works out to be a 15 mile. So then I do feel like I do owe them a bit of energy. Yeah, fair enough. knowing I can give them the energy makes me happy. Yeah, and then, now when we send you cheer charge bars, you're going to have a whole box of. You're and then I can share the love with them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> Buddies for ages. Oh, cool. Last one. This is actually six questions. I've got my numbers muddled up. Oh, here. that's um, me because I added in the extra ones. <laughs> do you, it doesn't have to be a local uh, course, but do you have a favourite parkrun course? Oh, my local one. I love it. <laughs> 
So I'm quite lazy about getting in the car. Like I drive to work and if I don't have to drive, I don't want to drive. And I don't really like the idea of driving to a run than yeah. running on drone map. So for me to run amazingly, to be able to run down, do the park run and run back, ticks every box. Uh, the park run is not flat. It's got 150 meters of climbing in. Ooh. It's through a national trust park so it's very rare that the conditions are good most of the time it's got cow shit all over the place dog walkers yeah. <laughs> and i just love that mix um so it's definitely my my local park run it's my favorite one happy thought to end the podcast thanks yeah so much. <laughs> yeah yeah I do. i'm lucky enough to say i absolutely love where i live so or, you know i crew marshal for them when i can and yeah, and stuff like that. So local local superstar marshals at Park Run. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hope you, we hope you feel uh hundred percent soon, Joe. Um, yeah. yeah, thank you. Best Interesting. of luck for the rest of twenty twenty two. when is your sorry, when was your Bob Graham again? May. Uh, May. May. Do you know do you remember which date? Oh, fourteenth. 14th okay may gary's put it in his diary he yeah, knows 14th. It. I, do, I am quite familiar with the course so <laughs> but 21 hours i'm not scared of that kind of pace either so <laughs> maybe yeah, yeah come us. that'd be amazing uh no it should be yeah we're just um got one more meeting as a group and then we'll that's it okay and you're all sorted you are you, you covered for all your so, yeah we worked out the logistics plan people have come forward i mean what what a community for people to do that because yeah. you know i am from devon i'm not don't know the course that well but no one's said anything horrible about that um <laughs> so i'm really grateful <laughs> well we can't all live in the lakes you know it's <laughs> no i know but i know there's probably in theory you should know each leg diligently um you know you should have wrecked it and it's almost a build up that you have to go through but i think people are realis realistic now that yeah, but this um, is good the start of your journey as well with the Bob Graham, maybe. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Killian. And, uh, Killian did Killian didn't know an inch of the course. And exactly. Nobody, yeah, uh, that's true. That does make me feel uh, slightly better. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah that does that's true. But uh, yeah, I did have a blast. There. But then if someone wanted to come down to Devon and have a go at the dark run, I have no problem showing them the way that I don't feel yeah, they yeah. have to wreck it. You know, it's just not everyone can live here. So but if people want to do it, I'm more than happy to. I think some people do get precious about, you know, your time on the course and stuff. But I think it's a lot of the time it's the spirit of the athlete, the spirit of the athlete. And like you say, if someone was to come to Devon, then you'd be more than happy to show them your local uh, trails. Yeah, yeah. And even if you know, they went on to beat it, it'd be great because that's what it's all about, just pushing yeah. out new challenges. So. Well, I hope you get a good weather, dear. That makes a big yeah, difference. Yeah, oh, yeah, no, that, yeah, that would be... Um, yeah, I hope so too, actually, on that front. <laughs> so. <laughs> Best of luck. Take care, Joe. Thanks. Thank you for your time, Gary, Eddie. Thank you. As always, Eddie, I enjoyed that. And best of luck, Joe Highland Fling. And I'm I'm checking out my diary because I would be super keen to get over there and do a bit of Bob Graham Rowan support um, for Joe. Yeah, awesome. we let you. Yeah, she sounded like she was pretty organised. She sounds like she's got yeah. a sort of team. Yeah. If um, I understood it right, it's not her Bob, it's someone yeah. else's Bob. And she's going along, obviously, she will get a, a Bob I think Graham Rowan. She wants to do it fast, doesn't she? But she just wants to do a sort of like pre recce, yeah. recce, recce, recce. Uh, and really nice as well to hear about her relationship with Scott. We're looking forward to uh, yeah. talking to Scott uh, at some point in the next few months. But I like hearing a brand that has supported her. For, for about five years, I think now, and they're not yeah. so in, there's no pressure on her for results, even though she's a supersonic runner. They just think that she's a great ambassador for the sport, but it's not through social media, which I really love as well. Yeah. She's just out there training, physio, working, dog mum, um, day in, day out, grind. She's representing herself really well, I think. Of yeah, course. yeah, I like that. I like that a lot. Kudos to Scott and kudos to Joe for uh, being that sort of runner as well. Race is coming up. Give us a message if you've got any races coming up, if you want to share yeah. that message. We've got the Beast of the Beacons. People just love it. Anything in the Beacons, there has to, obviously, the title has to be... <laughs> the Battle black. of the Beacons. The Battle. Why can't it just be bumbling around the Beacons? <laughs> the Bimble. You know, the Bimble of the Beacons. Uh, 20 and 40 mile ultra entries on the day. Get your uh, long run in this weekend. Uh, nice 20 mile. Oh, I love that. 
makes it so much easier. Um, <laughs> good luck if you're doing that. Double check that entries though, because we recorded this on Tuesday and I checked that SI entries last night. And obviously the show goes out on a Friday. So yeah, I don't want you to travel there. Well, probably if you're listening to this on Friday and not then going to make, well, you might do if you're crazy. Just That'd be like, awesome. Just go, I'm going to do 40 miles for tomorrow. <laughs> do, Gary, those hot cross buns. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and for me, Cow Shared Backyard Ultra in Stocksfield, Northumberland. So a 4.1 mile loop. And I am making the trophy for the, for the winner. <laughs> Oh legit they got in touch with me last week um bit of a last minute rush job so i need to go and finish varnishing it later today <laughs> it's private or do we need to wait and see it next week well, it's got a cow theme on it i should take a picture yeah i'll take a photograph of it um <laughs> but i was going to message i message uh, i was going to message mark saying oh is the one for the like uh, lady and the male winner but there's not isn't there? there's just one winner oh there. yeah we don't need to get on a high horse about that yeah that's okay it's just I'd one. Be super curious um yeah how many loops or laps or yards people do fascinating those i know people there melanie horan actually pe previous guest of the show northeast marathon club she's she's taken part so yeah best of luck and i really hope there's at least two people there who are who are up for a good race you've got to earn that trophy a lot of yeah. love and sweat's going to go into that trophy cool. how was your week looking eddie <laughs> oh mad gary <laughs> just partying loads of apri ski i'm just gonna go enjoy the end of season get some beers in Ski yeah. my bikini like all the uh, youngsters. No, uh, it's pretty busy. We're pretty busy in podcast worlding. And yeah, as I said, just uh, some light, more light running. See how that goes. Quite like to get a long run in, but steady. I might have to do it on the bike. Yeah. But that's all right. Um, we've got rain and a bit of misery coming in. But the, the end is now. We've got a week left of uh, skiing. Kids are on countdown and then they're on holiday. So um, I'm just enjoying the last few days of quiet and uh, peace. And then, yeah, they're pretty tired. The little darlings are pretty tired. I'm literally like digging them out of their bed to get out for school. And nice. uh, yeah, you've got these big black rings under their eyes. Their bodies are pretty tired. <laughs> they're like sort of like 20 year old. <laughs> yeah. uh, that's how I feel every day. <laughs> That's how I feel. They're rusty old, as they call me. Mum, come on with your rusty old bones. Um, so, yeah, I've got a busy week and I'm just going to keep moving forward in the training, hopefully enjoying this bit of spring sunshine. And then and last, I'll make the most of the last few. I'm um, going to do some nice cruisy skiing with because uh, the snow we, we we're lucky we've had a bit of more snow because it was getting a bit patchy. Yeah. But um, if you go out past like eleven, if it's warm, it's just like this slush of. Ooh, okay. I love it. Other people hate it because <laughs> I don't need. You don't need. To, all you have to do is like slide around. There's no effort involved. So a few lovely last skis. Yeah. Next time I speak to you, it'll all be over. All be over, Red Rover, which is fine. And then we'll get start looking forward to the summer. So keeping it cruisy, keeping the fuel, keeping the protein going in. Come on, body get strong we'd have time for this uh what what about you but for us, sometimes i think um i need to stop entering races because i love this cruisy running where you're just going out with mates for a run but as soon as you, you enter something and there's a point yeah. in time i did think about retiring last week i was like shall i just not if i didn't have races i could just yeah. like do this this would just be normal this is yeah. like really nice run when you feel like it yeah not or not <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it's pretty, i think yeah the, i'm not too sure how many years i can keep chipping away i've got a little lakeland 100 goal for when i turn 50 um so maybe that's I years away that. gary that's good oh, 20 years away isn't it fortunately i know it's hard to believe when you look at my silky smooth chiseled, chiseled jaw <laughs> <laughs> yeah. oh yeah so uh, how many years you can keep going back to the well i'm not too sure but, uh, yeah i don't know i'll keep doing it while i enjoy it and change change it up change it up but i do love the day this is the thing this is the thing i do love the day i love the event um i love all the kind of people coming together mm. and if i'm on that start line then i do want to do as well as i can so i don't think mm. i could Mm, I'm with you there. Though I saw um, something on the Spine group about a guy that was in charge of checkpoints and he, he's not doing it next year because him and his wife are just going to take six months. They're both retired and they're just going to walk the length of Britain like on all the different trails and they're going to stop. And I was like, Bryn, that's the sort of thing. Just, we'd have to take the dogs, wouldn't you? Dogs. I've got, I've got a friend. 
Martin Colborn, he walked the Cleveland way um, and he just stopped, you know, hotels and B&Bs along the way. And he's doing the coast to coast as well pretty soon. So that just sounds awesome. For me, anyway, first week of proper training. So back on it yet yeah, tomorrow night. I think I mentioned earlier, uh, 40 minutes of Fart Lake. Hoping for a trip to the lakes on Saturday, but it will not be running. Last week at the lakes was great because it felt, I, I took my GoPro, but I was just... I didn't stop. I just filmed as, as I was going. It wasn't really kind of stopping people running, but this trip to the lakes will be more filming for the YouTube channel, so it won't be any um, effort. But still, you know, like we mentioned, chat with a lot of our guests, they have just big deals out big deals out on the fells and trails. So when you're climbing up a hill, you're still using different muscles and you're stuff still like working. that. Yeah, and oh, my goodness me, Lent is over, isn't it? Easter Sunday, so I... Oh, because my kids aren't on holiday, like um, uh, the Brits are on holiday, I kind of, um, Easter kind of creeps out. I haven't ordered the Easter bunny. Get on it. Well, I haven't got long, Eddie, but I've still got my, uh, still got my Snickers. It's been well, there. You're going to get up at like 6 a.m. and just pound the Snickers. Oh, goodness me, I'm just going to be sick by lunchtime, aren't I? That's the. Oh, I remember one Easter, me and my big sister. So we used to like get an Easter egg put back in the day when you didn't get so much chocolate, you were sick. We'd get like one Easter egg at breakfast. Like um, we wouldn't be allowed to eat it until after lunch <laughs> back in the day again. But we sneakily ate the whole, we had like this massive, we ate the whole thing with all the infrequent. Oh. <laughs> that kind of on my dad. oh my god and then we had like this big roast for lunch and we were so we felt so sick we, still, we must have been about six to eight we still remember my big sister i still remember the chocolate easter <laughs> never again <sighs> yeah oh i hope you have a lovely what so what would you be your easter plans oh wow um will the easter bunny come <laughs> no, no, we don't do that anymore. It used to be wicked, we used to know, um, put little bunnies. I think, still, and... I think the Easter bunny will still be on the, on demand here. Do you do like a little, um, it's like the Barclays Marathon, so we'll put a little bit of chocolate somewhere, then a clue to where the next one is. And the kids okay, that's go... way too much effort of parenting for me. <laughs> what, we do, what we normally do is um, we make hard-boiled eggs, and then they ever or the kids decorate them, and yeah. then we go up, climb up a mountain somewhere, um, and have a picnic and then oh. we roll the eggs down the mountain and it's the last one surviving basically last one standing of course yeah. being so family, it has to be like some sort of competition <laughs> Easter competition. Uh, and then you eat then we take like a little salt pot and then you eat the egg oh, as so your lunch oh, um the dogs love it. If it, that takes a bit of like don't touch the egg dogs. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds wonderful no i hope you have a great day Thanks, Gary. I hope you enjoy your chocolate. Just remember the warning, not too much before lunch. I don't. Don't listen to that kind of stuff. <laughs> I don't have an off switch. Mentioned this quite a few times. Yeah, so. we know this, don't we? That it's going to just end with you lying on the floor covered in chocolate. <laughs> then that's again, no, one day, one day full on, and then I'll be back on the... I Honestly, I've got, I said it before, I feel really good on this reduced chocolate, uh, sorry, sugar in my diet so i'm going to keep on chugging on with it all the way to late 100 we've got some more reviews eddie and yeah three in the bank but we've got one epic one and from a from a friend of mine which is pretty awesome um oh it's nice when your mates give you a bit of kudos isn't it yeah. uh oh, I'm, I'm gonna read this okay hold your hats everybody here we go it's the best running podcast out there right now <laughs> it's totally right i mean it started in an excellent vein love it yeah. <laughs> gary and eddie are great pairing of course it's clear they're able to speak from experience while may remaining down to earth and relatable it's hard to believe they haven't actually met yet it's hard to believe isn't it, gary? It is, and it's really sad that probably i've digressed here listeners probably the first time we're going to meet it's probably going to be the summer spine challenger where i'm going to be really grumpy uh, a bit or really emotional uh actually it's gonna be no different really is it oh that's a tuesday yeah <laughs> that's a tuesday uh it's good to hear from their experiences of juggling family work and busy training schedules and i think they set a good example to anyone achieve aspiring to achieve their goals the guest speakers and content are a useful consistent and incredibly high standard i love that because they are of an incredibly high standard mainly due to gary's editing of my whining it's the perfect format to listen to well out on a long one i think this show all know that's a long word 
epitomizes, epitomizes epitomizes the warmth of the trail ultra running community and our desire to support and help better each other we agree i love their ability to not take things too seriously this is very serious gosh it has a nice conversational field with some good laughs and well may it should banter me mocking gary special mention to gary for a series of chance meetings that have made two races unequivocally better for me oh stop this first at london marathon 2021 for being a wonderful roommate in a hostel where i was unsure what to expect still can't believe we met at halfway despite being in different start pens that's meant to be and then by vicariously this guy's got some excellent use of the english language here setting up a great partnership between myself and the lane bison that helped us power through from the saturday night to the monday morning of the northern traverse i don't know this story keep up the good work we haven't got who that's from you know who it's uh, dead bales yeah dead bales and you know, ah. total coincidence but i was booked into the finnish church uh and dave because I was there on my own in the Finnish church. And I knew somebody else was going to be staying there because that's what the reception said. And I was thinking, oh my goodness, mate, I hope it's another runner for one and not a three random guys who were just going to be drinking all night. And then yeah, Dave, Dave rocked up and it was just like, whoa, phew. And uh, I think he was probably relieved too that I, I was another runner. And then, yeah, half, literally, I think on halfway, we bumped into each other again at the London Marathon. And then we just drifted apart. But Dave ran from the Finnish church to the start of the London Marathon, did the London Marathon. And I think he ran from the finish to wherever he parked his car in London somewhere. So yeah, he's got some legs on him. My goodness me. And then he did the, uh, the, the, the Northern Traverse and he bumped into Lynn Bisson, I think at Paddale and went all the way to, oh, if memory's correct, the three sisters. So pretty much. <laughs> Most of the course. Yeah, yeah stayed together um, all that way. So great company there. But I booked up the Finnish church again, anyone, if they want to recreate the magic um, up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be fully booked. Hi, is Gary here? Um, I've heard about the snacks and the, show. Gary from the podcast. <laughs> Gary from the podcast. <laughs> I love it. Oh, uh, thanks for that, dear. It does mean a lot to us because we do, I know it seems that we don't, but we do actually work quite hard on the podcast, don't we, Gary? And it's a bit like your fourth child. It's a sort of ungrateful um, because we de- that's the, <laughs> the only feedback we get. You know, you put it out there and the only feedback we get is that people listen to it, but we're really just talking into Zoom. Uh <laughs> We felt the love on Facebook this week. Oh, my goodness, oh, me, that was pretty awesome. It. Yeah, it does, because it's a hard work. You know, we are, as I said, we juggle a lot to make it all work, and it takes up hours of, I mean, detailed preparation, as you can tell, that goes into this. So uh, we're glad people listen, and if we're keeping you company or inspiring you to do uh, anything, and you're inspiring us. You keep me going, because I feel like I can't not. The content, I've got to do something for the content. I've got to <laughs> yeah, do yeah. It, you know? We talked about a long run last week, sure, would have kept you company for a long run. I think it was our broke the two-hour barrier last week wasn't it Tom Garrett so. uh, well done if you listened to all that kudos to you we've got a competition for everybody this week well it's a few weeks actually it's going to end on the 3rd of May and what we thought would be awesome if you would share with us uh, an eastery or a spring themed photograph maybe from out on your run um, like I said it doesn't have to just be Easter because that is this weekend and then Maybe You'll have eaten all your, basically Gary's like I'll have eaten all my chocolate eggs yeah. so I can't do any sort of Easter egg run because there will be in the ballet what have we got? We've got eggs, we've got daffodils, we've got lots of lambs out there at the lambs, moment. Lambs, lambs, lambs with a cheer charge bar. I mean, <laughs> think of product placement here, guys. Yeah, yeah, anything uh, better. <laughs> yeah, for weeks, get out when you're out. Some lovely spring pictures. Not so springy here. I'll have to think, of, I'll have to create something. Go and you've got a job to do, or you've got to do a Facebook post. Oh, Lord, and you know that'll always happen like a week later as well. I'll try and remember. Yeah, I'll pop something up on Facebook. And uh, yeah, you get such a good cheer charge bundle. It's worth it guys get yourself out there that was episode 85 thank you so much for cheer charge for sponsoring the show and keeping gary and i fueled through all these podcasts and running adventures i'm eddie sutton and i'm gary thwaites and let's run to the hills (laughs) 